Welcome to another spirit filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well. I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted unto you, and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. Now listen carefully. Please, I want you to covenant with yourself that you are going to get this morning's teaching. Listen to it again. By the Spirit of God, I'm revealing to you a very deep, mysterious, irrefutable formula. I want you to listen to what I'm about to tell you now. Everybody, please listen. Please, let me have your attention. There is a side effect to becoming prayerful. That you may not know. Mm. Now that you have prayed, I want you to listen. The moment you submit yourself to prayer, you are in a position of a dangerous risk. That I must tell you. Listen, listen, listen. Do you know why? Because the law of the altar is that the moment you submit yourself to prayer, watch this your organs of interaction with the realm of the spirit become alive and become heightened and these if satan cannot stop you from prayer the next thing that he does is to appear as an angel of light that's why i said listen to what i'm about to teach you many people's deception started because of the health of their prayer life many especially those called into the apostolic and the prophetic ministry i will tell you most of the error the bible says the spirit speaketh expressly that some in the latter time shall depart from the faith and they shall give heed to seducing spirits and the doctrine of demons it is a risk to suddenly be open to the realm of visions it is a risk to suddenly be open to the realm of encounters because as a naive believer exploring the realm of the spirit anything you see in your vision can be told you that it is God listen carefully there are people who went up the mountain sincerely and came back with ordinances that were not from God there are people who sincerely submitted themselves to days and weeks of prayer and fasting and came back with spiritual templates from the realm of the spirit but not by the holy ghost there are people who came back with their organs activated along the lines of the prophetic sincerely they were not wrong people when jesus went to pray who did he meet in the wilderness please talk to me <laughs> when your jesus went to pray i thought prayer should drive the devil but guess who was waiting for Jesus in the place of prayer? After praying for 40 days with fasting, I thought you would see Satan shaking and running away. Satan was patiently waiting. That means when you give yourself to prayer, it's not only angels you are attracting. The realm of the spirit, because it's the prayers of the saints are like an incense that rise. And there is a signal in the realm of the spirit. There is somebody who is assuming that formation of the glory. And Satan will take advantage of your sincerity. That's why I said promise that you will listen to this teaching again. That is the reason why those who submit to the ministry of prayer alone are in danger. Did you hear what I said? I've told you prayer is not everything. Prayer does act. Prayer has its ministry. But many people have shut down on every other provision that makes for the growth of the saints. And they have immersed themselves in a bid to access power. The only thing they know and the only thing they may have done, sincerely so, is prayer. And most of them have come with all kinds of erroneous things. Doctrines. So someone will tell you in the place of prayer, I went somewhere in the spirit. I don't know where. And I came back with a message. I came back with certain things. And you will see a semblance of power. And it begins to graduate until it becomes like the doctrine of Balaam. 
there are many things today respectfully speaking that have polluted the sanctity of the altar in the body of christ today it did not come by the ministry of wicked men they were not wicked they were sincere people who did not understand the full scope of the training and they chose one aspect of the training and left the rest and the devil cast in on their sincerity and revealed things to them that have become a destruction to themselves i know people who prayed and prayed until they had mental problems have you seen people like that and even while they are mad they are praying in tongues it looks like a mockery to god eventually they will take them to the hospital and sedate them no genuine prayer does not lead to that but i told you there is a risk because it exposes you and you encounter all kinds of spirits and every spirit is speaking so you will hear a spirit from the realm of the spirit loud and clear and you say go and stand by the road and because your heart is already inclined to obey you will say yes lord and go and stand but you find out that the more you obey that spirit that formation of christ has stopped you are becoming like something else that is not christ this is where the next training comes right please the ministry of the word the second key that helps the believer to become a person of stature is the ministry of the word is god helping us i know the lion i know the lamb i know the lion i know the lamb i believe in the lion i believe in the lamb i believe in the lion i believe in the lamb i follow the lion i follow the lamb hallelujah listen the ministry of the word and the ministry of prayer has become an age-long conflict which is more superior to which especially in the pentecostal and the charismatic circles now i'm saying this respectfully this is a believers meeting am i right on that so we have a group that may perceive themselves to be people of prayer especially the prophetic and the apostolic ministry then we have those who perceive themselves to be people of the word and sometimes the dichotomy is so wide that it almost looks as if there is enmity but the bible never created that dichotomy are we together jesus called himself the word but he said my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations am i right on that now i want to show you the roles that they play please look up jesus went as the word of god went in matthew chapter 4 jesus went to go and pray and fast everybody please look up please look up please look up please look up jesus is done praying everybody say prayer, prayer. one more time say prayer. prayer jesus is done praying and the next thing he sees is that satan appears to him am i right on that whether it's from the realm of his thoughts or it was a physical manifestation, the most important thing is that there was an interaction with this spirit entity, Satan. Are we together? And watch this. The first thing Satan told him is, don't forget that prayer produces power. Now in the place of prayer, you have power. Turn this stone to bread. In other words, convert that power to be an instrument for meeting your personal need. Forget about the bigger cause. That is the first there are three temptations every man must survive to rise i'm not teaching on that but those temptations of jesus number one is a temptation on your stomach manipulating the word of god and ministry to be used as an instrument of your stomach number two is spiritual laxity he took him up a holy mountain and said fall down spiritual carelessness for he shall put his angels charge over you the third temptation is a temptation of influence he took him into an exceeding great mountain and showed him the kingdoms of this world and their glories therefore and he said bow to me and i will give this to you 
But this is not what we are discussing now. Watch this. Satan comes to Jesus and said, turn this stone to bread. Look at Jesus' reply. It is. He never said, I have prayed. It is. Help me. It is. Why didn't he say, Satan, are you not respecting my prayer and fasting? Do you not know the energy that has been generated there? He said, it is written. Do you know if Jesus said, okay, Satan, that's a nice suggestion, and turned that stone to bread, his entire prayer life, the spiritual investment he has made, will be nothing. Simply because he did not know what was written. Then, let me show you now the value of prayer added to the word. Satan said, oh, I see that you respect the word too. So let's speak scripture now. Next temptation, Satan also said, it is written. He shall put his angels to uh, his angels charge over you. They shall bear thee up on their wings. Satan is quoting scripture now. Lest you dash your feet against a stone. Now, Satan is saying it is written. You are saying it is written. That is where the power of prayer comes in. That gives you the discernment. Because if you, do, if you have scripture alone. And no discernment that has been generated. Satan will come like the damn cell in Acts chapter 16 and also join you in prophesying and you say they are saying scripture is someone learning now Satan said it is written I know it too and Jesus said no by discernment I know that even though what is coming out of your mouth is scripture but you are not of God hmm. there are many many people today who have the word but they just have history and literature in their minds because the power that that backs up the word that should be generated in the place of prayer is not there and so most people just become respectfully speaking historians and they just make the bible says ye search the scripture for in them you think you will find life and you will not come to me that the scriptures themselves testify of me but ladies and gentlemen do you know why the word of God is powerful? Because the word of God creates boundaries to your spiritual experiences. The Bible has a lot to say about the word of God. For instance, in Colossians chapter 1 and verse 16, the Bible talks about the supremacy of the word. The supremacy of the word. Please give it to us. I hope someone is learning something this morning. Colossians 1 16. Let's read it if you can see it. Ready? One to read, please. For by him, the word now, were all things created that are in heaven and that are in the earth visible and invisible whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers all things were created by him and for him do you know what that means that means even if you have an encounter outside this realm the word of god still has supremacy and you can use the word of god to vet every experience so an angel can appear to you and you can judge by the speakings of that angel if it does not reveal Jesus and it does not lead you through the pathway you have a right to judge that angel by the word to say no this is inconsistent with the character of God most people do not have the word of God and it has destroyed them in ministry look at this for instance, let's assume that this gentleman seated and this lady say they are husband and wife. Do you know as a man of God, by prayer and through the prophetic, I can see for instance that there's something wrong with that lady. But how I will handle it now would depend on my understanding of scripture, not my understanding of prayer. If this is a man of God and this is your church and this is your wife and there is something wrong, number one, the Bible says do not rebuke an elder in public. So I'm not about to go and embarrass him and the wife because it will have an effect on the fold. Are you seeing how the word of God guides you now to administer power with wisdom? Many people through the prophetic have, have, have accessed graces, but the word of God does not define the coordinates of their administering power. And they keep, they keep you know, mismanaging power. Imagine an electric, a high voltage, naked wire on the ground. Will it do you any profit? No. You hold it and it will kill you. But that same power can be channeled through a socket. 
and you can charge something with it. Are you seeing now? The word of God, that's why the power of God resides within the word of God. Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 4. The Bible says, in that sun-like splendor is the hiding place of his power. Many people have not taken out time to be students of doctrine, to be students of the word. The Bible says they gave themselves continually to the apostles' doctrine. Please say doctrine. One more time, say doctrine. Now, theologically speaking, there are six foundational doctrines. I'm not listing it for you. There are six foundational doctrines that represent the believer's foundation. If you do not have an encounter with these six doctrines, building you are building upon shadows you find that in hebrews chapter 6 from verse 1 and 2 i'm not going to repeat it just you go and study it six of them foundational doctrines that build the believer of doctrine of baptisms repentance from dead works the bible lists them six of them that means when you begin to grow spiritually these are the foundational doctrines that you must learn Are we together? Why is scripture important? Because it helps us to understand the ways of God. The ways of God. The ways of God. The ways of God. Why is scripture important? Because it can open our eyes. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18 says, Having their understanding darkened. It says, Being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their minds. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scripture which is able to make you wise unto salvation are we still together now yes acts chapter 20 i believe and verse 32 or, or thereabout it says and now brethren i commend you to god and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified among them that are sanctified i commend you to god and to the word of his grace that it is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified everybody say the word one more time say the word say doctrine one more time say the word say doctrine the course curriculum that builds a believer to become a witness is called doctrine it comes from the latin word doctrina it means a predefined body of knowledge that makes a student to become something exact are we together in my example yesterday remember a medical student from year one to the final year has a body of knowledge that he must learn are we together so when you call somebody a doctor you mean one who has exhausted that body of knowledge and has been vetted and accredited by a council. Am I right on that? Yeah. Doctrine. As a man of God, your concern is to come and teach God's people doctrine. Now, let me tell you this. You don't go and teach doctrine in a crusade ground. And sometimes when you have a conference like this, two, three days, you are, you are short of time. But as a pastor with your members... You are not rushing anywhere so you take the time and teach don't teach members as if you are teaching in a conference you are not rushing anywhere they are there with you largely for years or for a lifetime so you take time methodically line upon line precept upon precept and let me tell you this when it has to do with knowing god our knowledge of god is infinite but when it has to do or the knowledge of god is infinite but when it has to do with raising believers to mature the body of truth that you communicate to them is finite there is an exact body of truth that you teach believers and then recycle it again and recycle it again so as a man of god your assignment is not newness it is freshness hmm. papa hagen spent his life teaching on faith and yet he would not listen to any of that message that looks like the other what what i think the pressure especially that the priesthood ministry in our world has today is there is such a itch to bring newness because it looks like i've taught on prayer will i teach on prayer again i've taught on fasting 
I've taught on the word of God. I've taught on giving. I've taught on the kingdom. What else is there? Question. A professor who has been teaching in the university for 35 years, say in the faculty of medicine or architecture, what has he been teaching? Is it true that he has been teaching the same thing? Is it true that he has been teaching the same thing? <laughs> Faith comes by hearing and hearing. Faith comes by hearing and hearing. Faith comes by hearing. Psychologists and educationists teach us that at the initial point of communicating a thought, less than 26% of it is truly assimilated by those who hear. So forget that members shout and say, yes! They are not getting anything most times. You will need to repeat it with diligence and seriousness. Members are masters of flattering you. They will comment unnecessarily and walk out and believe me, that 26% is even for a serious student. To the point that after Jesus himself mentored the disciples, he said when the spirit of truth is come, he will remind you again. Is it not in your Bible? He will, because the way you are now, chances are excellent you will forget. He will bring back to your memories everything I have taught you. Say amen. amen. That's why we thank God for technology now that can help us capture teachings that you listen to it again. And as you listen to it, you will hear something you did not hear. Even if you are the one who preached it, you will hear something you did not hear. And God can join seemingly unconnected thoughts together for you that no one else will hear in that teaching. Everybody say the word. One more time, say the word. So I've taught you two agencies now. In the making of men to become witnesses, to become people of glory. Number one, strategic and systemic prayer number two and when i talk of prayer you know that i also mean prayer with fasting hallelujah yes fasting is beneficial spiritually fasting is beneficial nutritionally are we together number three hmm. if you are learning say amen You want to become a man of power. You want to become a man of grace. The third is called corporate fellowship. Write it down. Corporate fellowship is another mystery. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25. Corporate fellowship. Hebrews 10 25 charges us not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. Is that in your Bible? as the manner of some is but exhorting one another so much more as you see the days appearing listen to me if you want to become a man of power a man of grace a man that evolves into a vessel of honor you cannot ignore the place of corporate fellowship the convergence of believers together for the purpose of mentorship for the purpose of learning and for the purpose of growth this is very important you may have heard me teach that kingdom community living is the key to sustaining kingdom values. Every believer must have a company of believers that you are connected to. This is very important. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Is that in your Bible? Psalm 133. Behold how good and how pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity. The Bible says it is like the oil upon the head of Aaron the priest that comes down from his head to his bed, down to his garment, his skirt. The Bible says for there God hath commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. No matter your personal work with God, there are certain dimensions in your dealings with God that cannot happen to you alone. It will have to happen under the corporate anointing. Is someone learning now? While they prayed, the Holy Ghost said to them, separate me, Paul. Is, is that in your Bible? While they prayed together. Let me tell you the truth. Even if you encounter Jesus in a vision, 
he will still lead you back to his church for the continuity of your growth. So don't say, I don't need anybody. I don't need any corporate gathering of believers. It is a spirit of the Antichrist. It is deception. Are we together? Standing alone, you will not be able to do much, I promise you. Read Bible history. Most of the believers that were alone, they died early. They could not stand. The strength of many believers was when they were together and they returned to their company. So you comfort one another. How many of you have come to church very tired, almost giving up, and somebody just raises one song? And while other people are just looking, you are the only one crying because that song is healing you from something. God placed an anointing. This is why worship leaders in church must be serious. In fact, everybody in church, workers must be serious. Pastors, don't just deploy skill alone. Deploy spirituality and consecration and sacrifice. Because what they are singing is not a special number. What they are singing is ministering life. Somebody's life depends on that song. So you are supposed to lead a song. You don't just stand up and then quickly check your list of songs. And come and stand and you are the only one dancing. You see that it's not ministering to the people. It's very clear that you are the, you are, there's no life communicated. When you stand to minister, you reveal your secret place. Whether to minister in word or to minister in worship, your communication is a window into your secret place. And men can look and say, what is this one now? Even those who are not spiritual can know. You are raising a song of worship and people are sleeping. There is nothing touching them. Everybody say fellowship. Question. You have come for this conference now. Look at how many things you have learned. Does that mean you do not know God? Does that mean you do not have the Holy Ghost? Imagine that you were not here. There are some of you, what you are listening, you are learning now, maybe new. Some of you, he's refreshing you again. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Let me give you number four. Are you learning? Show me a believer who follows these pathways. And I show you a man who will become mighty. Let me recap. Number one, that you must submit yourself to prayer. Submit yourself to the word. Submit yourself to fellowship. Are you ready now? When you want to emerge, you have to submit yourself to competence and to learning. This is the fourth thing. You will hardly hear this in church. Most times, once we talk about prayer and the word, we stop there. But you want to become a career and a manifesto of the glory of God. You must submit yourself to competence as touching your area of calling and election. Proverbs 22 and verse 29. The Bible says, See thou a man diligent in his business. He shall stand before kings. Are we together? He shall not stand before mean men. Please say competence. One more time, say competence. There is a relationship between competence and excellence and the glory of God. It says, oh Lord our God, how excellent is your name. There are many people who submit themselves in truth to prayer. They submit themselves to the word. They submit themselves to fellowship. But they have not seen the value or the need to be competent. Competent in ministry, competent in career, competent in business. You are a preacher, don't come and stand. Let me tell you the truth. The world that we live in today has options. Nobody will come and submit to your spiritual leadership with a man who you are not sound in scripture. You are not even vast as to life. Because there are times you have to draw examples. Look at Jesus. He used parables from real life experiences. You need in, in your church are professors. In your church are intellectuals. Nobody will come and make a fool of himself. Just coming to submit to nothing. Are we together? No man will carry his wife and children and submit indefinitely. And they are not learning. Learning and sound communication. Is a product of competence. Every scripture you quote is wrong. Even when you read it from the Bible, you are still reading what is wrong. No. No. 
apostle God has called me to be a prophet stop moving around and embarrassing yourself learn the prophetic ministry sharpen yourself huh God has made you a teacher submit to doctrine get materials go for training if need be so that you are sound when you are giving a sound exegesis of scripture people listen to you you are not communicating opinions this is not just English apostle I'm a businessman tell me what you know about business all I want to make is money no sir there are certain corridors of glory you will not get to are we together did you know that there are two people in scripture who rose to a position of influence and for all of them it was competence that took them there number one is joseph you find that in genesis 40 41 42 those two chapters talks about his final faces in the prison up to the time of his interpreting pharaoh's dream his eventual exaltation he was exalted and the bible says he was given a wife to marry the daughter of of Potiphera, the priest of on and they gave him a name Zafat Tania. they gave him a name a, an egyptian name and he became a great man he said i am pharaoh and only by your word will egypt be ruled can we find such a man so discreet and wise in whom the spirit of the gods is number two was daniel in babylon daniel was among the eunuchs that went into captivity and when you read Daniel 1 and verse 8, the Bible says, And Daniel proposed in his heart that he will not defile himself with the king's portion. Are we together? He was so sound in Daniel chapter 2. When you read from verse 28, now about to interpret the king's dream, the Bible says, Then the secret was revealed unto Daniel. And you now begin to read, you see that Daniel was elevated, he was exalted. You want to see the extent of Daniel's exaltation? Read Daniel chapter 5 from verse 1 downwards and then Daniel chapter 6 from verse 1 downwards. That they decided to put precedence and out of them, one of them was Daniel. And that he was such an exceptional person to a point that when the enemies of the kingdom wanted to find an occasion... They could not trace it to incompetence. They had to use prayer to trap Daniel. What a man. Make a covenant with yourself right now today. Whether you are a pastor, whether you are a businessman, that you will run away from incompetence. I respect the fact that you are a man of prayer. I respect the fact that you are a man of the word. And respectfully speaking, co-laborers in the vineyard, can I encourage us and beseech us by the message of God? Let's stop wasting the time of God's people. Otherwise, we'll be ready for empty pews in these last days. Because there are many alternatives. There are many options. That the opening of your mouth will be like the gates of wisdom being opened. People look forward to listening to you. Ah, he said, oh, that in, I was in the days of my youth. Right? When the secrets of the Lord was upon my tabernacle, and that by his light I, I went through darkness the young men saw me and stood the old men saw me they refrained their mouths from speaking the excellency of wisdom i made up my mind as a covenant that it's not just being anointed that that i will present to the world i will do my homework i will make sure by the grace of god i obtain grace to be competent i daniel understood by books the Bible says to buy the truth and sell it not. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke spiritual laziness. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke intellectual laziness. Men of God, let's prepare our sermons with diligence. Don't stand on the stage and it will be very clear. You see, members are not stupid people. They know when you have not done your homework. To the point that they will stop shouting amen to your prayers because there is a track record of prolonged unseriousness may you be so competent that people will come to learn god through you they listen to you as a businessman they want to they want to tap into your wisdom the bible says be wise as a serpent when it has to do with living and excelling in the cosmos you can even borrow the wisdom of the serpent you see there's no time I would have shown you from the life of the man we call Abraham. Did you know 
that when it had to do with the matters of the altar and matters of spirituality abraham was powerful but he was ignorant and when god wanted him to understand that secular knowledge he took him to go and learn the wisdom is in your bible he took him to the house of abimelech he went there same thing with moses moses went to learn the wisdom of the egyptians most believers do not know that you need to have intelligence even of understanding the laws of life and the laws of destiny it's not just spiritual laws alone destiny and life has laws and systems do you understand organization do you understand leadership do you do you have people skills do you know how to coordinate systems to make them work you can have a church that comes because of the anointing you are in and you'll find out that it will become a place of confusion because there is no organization the first thing that came back to life in the dry bones of ezekiel are the skeletons skeletons talk of structure before god will give life to any organization the structure must be in place if you're with me say amen, amen. so number one prayer number two the ministry of the word number three corporate fellowship number four competence are you ready for number five you must submit yourself to character development character second peter chapter one please let's begin our reading from verse five character write it down if you want longevity of impact you want to be the vessel that hosts the glory of god for a long time neglect this and you do it at the peril the expense of your relevance second peter chapter 1 from verse 5 please look up everybody and besides this giving diligence r2 everybody say r2 r2 that's right thank god for the ones you have but there is still something to add to it says add to your faith virtue moral excellence and to virtue knowledge verse 6 reading to 10 and to knowledge self-control and to self-control patience and to patience godliness seven and to godliness brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness charity or love verse eight if these things be in you including the ones you have added they make that you shall neither be barren or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 9. It says, But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off, for he had forgotten that he was purged of his old sins. Final verse 10. It says, Wherefore the rather brethren use these additions to give diligence so that you will make your calling and your election sure. He says for if this if ye do these things what is the, the prophecy there ye shall never fall ye shall never fall ye shall never fall anybody praying for your downfall will only be wasting their time because in addition to this that if you can add that means no matter your spirituality your rema if you don't add character there is a problem with the longevity of your impact and unfortunately respectfully so many have become victims of this in the night i'm going to teach you on empowerment since we are doing the miracle service and i'll be teaching you that there are three things that follow mantles you see there are spiritual backings in terms of angels angelic activities that signify certain revelations according to revelation 1 verse 1 the revelation of jesus which he gave unto his servant john the bible says he sent it and signified it by his angel so there are angels that don't follow men they follow certain anointings for instance when thank god for your gracious protocol system we have people from the dss the military and all of this and, and i'm so thankful for you know their intelligence and i just sat back and watching all of them professionally communicating with themselves i think you should celebrate them now watch that if the governor of your state is to come here now in the capacity as a governor 
Are we together? There are certain people and certain military paraphernalia that comes with him. They don't come to him as a person. They follow the office. So when certain mantles are on you, I'm telling you three things. I'm giving you a teaser for tonight. Number one is that there are certain angelic backings that follow you. Number two, men will follow you. But number three, there are spirits that are attached not to men, but attached to mantles. Demonic spirits now. They don't follow men. They have no business following you. They follow whoever is the carrier of that mantle. So if you are Samson, Delilah starts looking for you. Not because you have any business with her. She was assigned to follow whoever is Samson. Hmm. Say amen. amen. That is the reason why God does not answer certain prayers of more anointing. Do you know why? Because the battles that you are about to confront, you don't have the spiritual intelligence to maintain victory at that level. So God will love you by keeping you in that state until revelation comes. I went up by revelations. Galatians 2 and verse 2. And I went up by revelation. You don't go up by desire. It takes revelation. Are we learning? Character. Please look at me. Character is very powerful because it sustains the ability to preserve that which God places on your life. There are many, many men of God. There are many people who do not have character. Character over the lust of the eyes. Please look at me. The Bible categorizes them into three. Remember, love not the world, neither the things that are in this world. The Bible says, if any man, doesn't matter who you are, loves the world. He said, the love of the Father is not in you. Then he says, all that is in the world. And lists, categorizes them into three. Number one, the lust of the flesh number two the lust of the eyes number three the pride of life everything that will bring you down is in these three categories what is the lust of the flesh the impulses that come to you by reason of wearing a more a mortal body gluttony moral deficiencies in terms of immorality all of these things are lust of the flesh that means if you did not have a body there will be no need I, I hope you know that yes the reason why you are in that kind of trouble is because you have a body then number two lust of the eyes the temptations and the impulses that come to you by reason of the power of sight covetousness is it not because you could see if you were blind hopefully you would have been safe but now that you have a pair of eyes you saw your colleague rising you saw his membership and bitterness and jealousy all of these things are product the side effect of having a pair of eyes that's why you must pray and sanctify your eyes that lord no matter what my eyes see in the name of jesus i will not allow the devil to midwife my sight and my heart between my eyes and my heart let the blood of jesus purge everything so that the elements of jealousy am i together now you can be as anointed as whatever what made saul want to kill david he saw that this young man had a great potential and the women now complicated the matter saul killed one thousand david killed ten thousand and saul said no no this guy must die and he used a javelin it took david having wisdom to run away can i tell you you must trust god to purge your eyes this unhealthy competition that exists among men of god and all kinds of things these eyes you see is a gift from god but these eyes can be a weapon of mass destruction. There are people who went to hell today because of their eyes. That's why the Bible says if your eye causes you to sin, it says pluck it out. It doesn't mean remove, remove it like this. No, you have to understand what the Bible is saying. Are we together now? To pluck it out does not mean to remove it. To plug it out means cause it to lose its strength and efficiency as far as partnering with the devil to destroy you is concerned. When you pluck out your eyes, it no longer works. So he's talking about being dead to the flesh holistically. And then number three, the pride of life. I hope you know that the pride of life is different from pride. You cannot have the pride of life until you have results. 
the pride of life is the self vain glorification that happens at the instance of provable results so the moment you have results be careful because you stand the risk of the pride of life this is what happened to the king in babylon he had results and he said build me a statue of myself 90 feet pure gold and everybody when you hear the sound of the instrument bow to that image and some hebrew boy said no we will not do this we love you we respect authority but in this matter we will not bow the pride of life can i tell you this keys i'm showing you will make you a great man of power envied by darkness and envied by men one of the assignments of character and that includes humility is to be able to guard you so that you remain you get the glory you get the praise you take the honor i just want to say thank you you get the glory you got the glory you get the praise you got the praise you take the honor i just want to say thank you thank you so in my life be glorified be glorified in my life be glorified be glorified listen by the time you begin to prophesy by the time revelation comes to you and you are dishing out scripture after scripture look at me ladies and gentlemen by the time people begin to sing your praises joshua selman that is when you are closer to the corridors of destruction let me show you the position of a champion in this kingdom this is it you get the glory you get the praise you get the praise you take the honor you take the honor i just want to say thank you thank listen you. there are men immorality could not bring them down there are men money could not bring them down there are men that jealousy could not bring them down but the one thing that pushed them freely was pride and thou shalt say in thy heart that my power and the might of my hand has given me this. No man can receive anything except it is given unto him. Pastors, let us stop some of these statements that we make on stage that makes it look like we are, uh, mm -mm, be careful. I know we came from backgrounds where maybe nobody believed in you. By the time you make it, you want to rub it in. It's unnecessary. Your assignment is to see Jesus glorified. Some of these statements we make in the name of cliches of ministry. The jealous one is watching. And let me tell you, God can give you something and still fight it if he tries to take his place. There are many, many battles people are fighting that is not by demons. That's why the anointing cannot solve it. Because the anointing was not design, designed to fight God. The anointing only fights what is against God. But if God is the one fighting you, which anointing are you going to use to fight him? Is it not in your Bible that God opposes? What does it mean to oppose? You know how powerful God is? Who can stand against the Lord? No one can. No one will. Listen. This is my final charge. You want to last? Let me show you a powerful key. In all your getting, get humility. Ah, in all your getting, get humility. Don't stand and tell me. Listen, look at me. If I arrange women or men, and I put money, and I put pride, I know most of you would think the highest to overcome is the first one. It may not be true some of you may think the highest the most difficult to overcome is money it may not be true let me tell you the truth the highest victory of the believer is in the place of conquering pride let this mind be in you 
which was also in Christ Jesus. Is that in your Bible? That though he was equal with God, he did not consider it robbery, but he humbled himself. When God begins to do mighty things with you, it is not unusual for men to sing your praises. You become an admiration to everybody. Listen, the person talking to you is not in ignorance. I know what I'm saying. You see, Ba, when the glory of God comes upon your life, if men can, they will even worship you. It takes you knowing huh? and letting men know that thank God for the things you are doing, but for God's sake, there is one mightier than I. John got it well initially. I don't know what happened to him later on. He said that I may decrease, that he may increase. There are pastors here and there are many people here. By this teaching this morning, God is revealing to you that this is what has stopped you. This is why the church started going down. This is why it looked like the anointing and the grace, nothing was happening again. Because humility is a mysterious lifter. What is humility? Humility is not denying the obvious. Humility is not denying the hand of God. When the hand of God is upon you, it is upon you. If you are blessed, you are blessed. If God has lifted you, you are lifted. Humility is not denying that. Don't confuse humility with simplicity. If you bring me a bottle of water and you bring me a bag of pure water, I will drink the bottle of water. I'm not going to drink the bag of pure, uh, water as a side. That's not humility. No, no. Are we together? Let me tell you what true humility is. Acknowledging Jesus as the basis the reason for all that you are and then using that position to glorify him that is humility my car my church my anointing let's be careful owners are rebels in this kingdom nobody owns anything we are stewards in this kingdom please listen to me and the Bible says, moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. I'm saying this because after the impartation tonight, some of you will be carrying mysterious graces. You will move like wildfire across your life. But I'm giving you a word of caution now so that when people look at you as, are you a human being with these kinds of miracles happening in your hand? Don't make the mistake that men... Anyway, let me keep quiet there. But there was one of God's generals that made this mistake. He got to a point where because of the excellency of the workings of the Spirit in his life, people started calling him certain names. And at a point, it got into him. I pray all the time. And I tell God, walk on my heart. I don't even know the tendencies that are in my heart. Don't sit down and say, me, I can never be proud. How much do you have? Where have you gone to? You see, there are some things that is the talk of foolish people. I'm not insulting you. I'm just being sincere. There are certain levels of glory that when you see, sometimes you have to stop yourself from entering it intentionally because of the state of your heart. Hallelujah. There are men of God as soon as they return from overseas. They said, I would never suffer like this again. I'm not a fool. I've suffered from bet. I suffered while God was training me. And now that I went to America, look at what happened. Ah, no. I won't go back to um, yesterday or, you know, Egypt or whatever name you call it. And that becomes the beginning of compromise. Humility. I prayed a prayer to the Lord years ago and I'm still praying it now even as I'm standing on stage I said Lord may I never know the extent of my impact in the lives of people it is not necessary let me just know that by the privilege of God's grace you are using my life to bless people but never allow me know how far the grace you have placed upon my life is blessing people and God answered that prayer lest I be overtaken by pride because it's a human thing look when you are honest with yourself you are ready to, to experience the mercy of god but once you put yourself in this big man position no i can't do anything me oh i'm seeing women like trees i'm seeing money like paper all those lies is why the devil destroys people 
Are we together this morning? A broken and a contrite heart, oh God, that will not despise. I'm already giving us the prayer point for this morning. Because for a few minutes we are going to cry before the Lord and say, search my heart and try my thoughts, O God. I do not know the tendencies that are locked up in my heart. Lest I become a disaster to myself and a disaster to others. Pride. Pride has destroyed many businesses. There was a man in the Bible called a rich fool. Those are two words that don't go together. Because wealth is a product of wisdom. I don't know how he became a rich fool. What was the foolishness? He built barns and put his wealth there. And said, my soul found rest. And the Lord said, nay, for today your soul is required of you. Ladies and gentlemen, hear me. I've presented to you these templates. These are the templates that those who went before us have followed. And have lasted. They have stood the test of time. Let me recap one last time and then we begin to pray. Please make sure you participate in the prayer. Number one, the ministry of strategic and systemic prayer. Giving yourself to prayer as a routine. Number two, the ministry of the word. A careful study of doctrine where you hide the word in your heart and with it you learn the ways of God. Number three, the power of corporate fellowship receiving the multifaceted investments of the spirit as given to the body of christ are we together number four what's number four yes competence as far as your area of call and election is concerned you are in the fivefold give yourself to be competent in that area you are in business any of the mountains at all you are in media you are a worshiper don't come and stand and sing and forget what you are saying Three of you are singing, only you is singing the third verse. The remaining two have kept quiet because you did not rehearse, you did not practice. Are we together? Mm. They should be able to wake you up as a man of God and give you a mic to speak in a conference for one week and you should not be ashamed because the Bible mandates to be instant in season and out of season. And then number five, character chiefest among them is humility most other character destroying traits partner with pride to walk pride is an accelerator of any evil at all anything plus pride becomes the worst version of it foolishness plus pride becomes a higher version of foolishness laziness excuse me plus pride becomes a wicked version of laziness pride accelerates any dimension of evil in your life show me a man that has anything wrong in his life but with humility is quick to identify that person and show him mercy thou son of david i am sick but i'm not too proud have mercy on me and salvation came but the scribes and the pharisees they were around every one of jesus's crusade yet they were never blessed by it they were the earliest to come because there was no record of them sitting outside even when there was a crowd yet they were never transformed by the word they were just listening to the mistakes that you would say then they will ask foolish questions now that you have said this let's ask the question which one is better to forgive sins or to raise these are all kinds of questions you want to become mighty you want to take yola for jesus you may have heard my teaching on revivals and I did this one in a just concluded conference in the UK also I thought that revival is threefold the first and most important part of revival is personal remember the church in Pagamos the church in Smyrna the church in Philadelphia the church in Ephesus every one of those churches had commendations and they had things that the Spirit of God observed okay you have done well in this but this return to your first love you can get it in the message the purified church you listen to it and pray that is a real revival tool the washing of the water even by the word when it comes to this issue of consecration there are no generals there you die daily there are generals of faith there are generals of power but when it has to do with walking with god and submitting and dying daily nobody calls himself a general there it's only a liar that says I'm a general. Are we together? 
The Bible says if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He was speaking to believers. This is John's epistle. So the earlier your heart is open before God and you go for a retreat, Lord, I found out that in the last one week, there's an unusual desire for money. This loss for money, it looks like my mind has started drifting away. Show me mercy. That's it. The blood comes to speak. Father, it looks like jealousy and pride is already growing in me. The day I saw that man of God or saw that woman of God, something happened. It's from the sincerity of my heart. It's as a product of the background I came from. Show me mercy. And the mercy of God comes. You may also want to listen to my message on the mercy of God. Not everybody is a candidate of God's mercy. No. The mercy of God has requirements to work in your life. You find that in Psalm 51. 51 was the confession of David. When David, remember David together with the prophet, after he killed Uriah and they opened up his sin to him, he cried before God. We have to stop here. Is someone ready to cry before the Lord? We have the next five minutes. I leave you with your maker. For the next five minutes, I want you to cry. I don't know what position fits you. But in the next, please, no moving around. Let's respect God. The next five minutes. The helper of man. The helper of man. The helper of men. Someone pray. Repent of prayerlessness. Repent of carelessness. Repent of spiritual laxity. Please pray, just a few minutes. Take my heart and mold it. Take my mind transform it take my will conform it to yours to yours oh lord to yours to yours Lord, I hand over the ministry. I hand over my reputation. Thank you for the anointing you have given me. But I declare in the name of Jesus that it belongs to you. Hand over your life afresh again to him. Just two more minutes. I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours forever. I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours. My life is yours, it's yours, it's yours forever. It's yours, it's yours, it's yours. Please pray one more minute. You're praying. Shepherd of my soul, I give you full control. 
wherever you may lead I will follow And I have made a choice That I will listen for your voice Wherever you may lead I will go Hallelujah 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 We're wrapping up This is how great men are made Carry this formula And apply it to any member in your church Who submits You will find power I want to speak a word to someone And then we'll be done for today And prepare for tonight I sense in my heart that There are men of God here There are women of God there are people who may not be in ministry who have been broken listen carefully and are disappointed some of you have served God sincerely with integrity of heart but it looks like this finances is not answering some of you maybe your homes maybe some of you your children and people even look at you and point and say can you imagine this what a good man but see the kind of useless children that he has some of you are trusting God for money maybe to build your church to be able to have a place of your own I have a word for you and I want you to listen this is what God said I should tell you God will make a way where there seems to be no way I'm not singing he walks in ways we cannot see he will make a way for you and he will be your guide holds you closely to his side with love and strength for each new day he will make a way my god will make a way let me prophesy one more time my god will make a way pray for the sick and nothing happened you called for a sincere meeting I've prayed for dead bodies that did not come back to life I walked out of that place sincerely you are not the first to be disappointed you called upon the name of the Lord in the meeting and you left in shame don't worry there is a walking he's doing in you you told everybody God prospers and your landlord drove you out the church building and your house building in the presence of everybody and people looked at you and said go and walk on yourself this is my final word it may not be for everybody but I'm speaking to someone I perceive in my spirit that there are many leaders here some of you have been fought by people you have been called names and you are saying what is it because I answered the call some of you may not even know what to do now you are even about to give up to say this ministry I'm tired honestly some of you married men and women of God you are about to regret because it looked like you had a better life and you now came to rubbish yourself can I tell you you never go down with God you can fail alone but you cannot fail with God you cannot fail with God take it down for me let me comfort somebody before we close will you hold on through the storm listen to me please hold on to his word your life will soon reveal he's the lifter of men the lifter of men man of god hear me will you hold on through the storm will you hold on to his word even though you are crying your story is about to change by the lifter of men the lifter of men many years ago nobody knew me then I was invited to go for a meeting I prayed I fasted it was raining the meeting was not very far from my house and the people were waiting for me I had a choice to just stay back there or to walk towards the meeting and I said Lord for you not for any name I carried my Bible and I stepped out in that rain and while the rain was beating me I was going with joy eventually I got a bike and I climbed that bike 
when I got to the church they did not even keep a seat for me it was when I got there that the people just pushed someone you know I just came in and they dressed people and kept a seat there I was drenched but I was happy and then they acted drama they sang they rapped they did all kinds of things and then when it was the time to come and preach they just passed a little paper and said please because of time let me just walk with 10 or 15 minutes and you are imagining after praying and all of that that was a pruning and a making by God working on your character and I finished with all my heart those days when you finish praying I didn't even know there was something called honorarium and then the way they honor you is as if you tell them to go because it's until you climb the bike first then you see 2a you know this 2a exercise book that they tear half of it they just put something no no please god bless you all right no problem well when you come just just do that on the ground eh? the lord honor you thank you i really feel embarrassed for these kinds of things my apologies please carry drop it in your offering basket thank you hallelujah and step by step there were times where they would invite me and they did not even know how i arrived there but i still went gradually i'm comforting you because don't abort something precious that is being birthed because of offense i went to preach somewhere they did not update or i'm a pastor and they said well we have a brother here come and preach don't worry it does not kill anything it was a time to sing and they invited every other person and then they gave you five minutes they said please can you just raise if it's three verses sing one no problem go and sing it it's an honor to serve the king serve him with all your heart because when you are faithful in little you are faithful in much in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare by the power of the holy spirit that for many of you you begin your journey from today that reveals the glory of god upon your life shout a loud amen I decree and I declare that as you begin to walk in keeping with these mysteries that of prayer that of the word that of fellowship that of competence and that of character even humility may a new you begin to evolve may a powerful you begin to evolve may you that is full of wisdom begin to evolve may the glory of God rise so marvelously upon your life may you become a man to be wondered at may you become a praise even to the nations in the name of jesus christ now for tonight let me encourage you let me let my voice with his lordship the bishop to encourage you tonight who we'll have the time to be ministering to people is a miracle and an impartation service that is when you'll be receiving there's no time now to begin to do any impartation please i want you to invite particularly men and women of god let them come when god sends a word to jacob it is because he wants it to be lightened upon israel are we together now that we stand here ministering does not mean we are better than anybody it's just the, the privilege of the grace of god and that which god gives is for the edification of the body corporately hallelujah so invite your loved ones those who are hungry and crying invite your memberships whether there's no space inside if you have to sit on the roof sit there but make sure your heart is open to receive, to be delivered from every kind of yoke. And as I always do at the permission of his lordship, may I request that you come with your prayer request or some of the ushers, you can have a, maybe a prayer, whatever it is, so that people can write their prayer requests. The Bible says, unto thee that answers prayer shall all flesh come. We'll be lifting up a, a cry to heaven to visit families, and to speak over the territory of Yola because it's a new season and it's a time of birthing the new. It's a time for a new dimension of the glory of God to come. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.